This video will demonstrate setting up Wago Remote I.O. with the Node Red Contrib Remote I.O. library. For this demonstration, I'll use a Raspberry Pi for a controller. And for the Remote I.O., I'll be using Wago 750-352 Modbus coupler with a digital input, a 4 to 20 milliamp input, a thermocouple input, power measurement module. Um, and I'll be using a CT to monitor the uh, AC power. Um, to see this library, you can go to nodered.org. And under Flows, you can search Remote I.O. So we're going to go ahead and SSH into our uh, Raspberry Pi and install the Node-RED Contrib Remote I.O. package. So uh, we'll log in. We'll go to the Node-RED directory. And then we'll simply uh, enter npm install node-red-contrib-remote-io. And this package will install. Once it's done, you can take a look at a sample uh, flow I created here. We've got some Modbus reads, and then we'll look a little closer at the um, actual remote I.O. nodes. So in the analog input, we can select our input type. We can also select our bit size and the type of output we want from the node. So we can have either raw, scaled, or uh, the actual uh, word value. We'll deploy this, and we'll look at the debug info. And you can see we're getting a good raw signal out of there if we change the sensor value. Next, we'll move on to the thermocouple. Um, again, one word of data. And if we select this, um, we can select either thermocouple or RTD, and we can select Fahrenheit or Celsius output from this node. In our debug, you'll see we're getting a good Fahrenheit signal. This next block is a power measurement block. So we've got um, six words of data coming into this. And we actually have to write four words of data out. So we can select our module here. We've got the 750-494. We've only got one leg of AC hooked up to this, so we'll only see values on one leg. Um, but in the module info, you'll see the output pin mapping. Uh, output pin 2 is Modbus out data, which is required to write the state of the module. And you can see it cycling uh, nice and well on the bottom. We've got L1 voltage, we've got uh, L1 current, and we've got L1 frequency as well. And then lastly, uh, we have a digital input block um, so we'll set this up with one word of data. This digital input is nice because uh, we can change the size. So if we have a different size digital input, we can change this. Um, and we also have the ability to offset the bits if we're not using the whole word, um, say for a four channel module. We've got this hooked up to a switch. So you'll see we're getting a nice false reading until I switch the switch and it goes true. Um, I have some of these hooked up to interface blocks and we can see what this looks like on the web interface. Uh, we've got our voltage, our current and our um, frequency and our digital input at the bottom. Thanks very much for watching.